Hey guys, so today we're going to go over how to update your firmware on your Giant Arm D200 uh, 3D printer from GTEC. This will also cover the E180 as well. Um, in fact, almost all the GTEC printers at this point have pretty much the same steps for, for updating the firmware. Now in my case, the reason why I'm updating the firmware is because I've been having some layer shift issues and stuff like that, and it's mainly been because I updated my settings in Cura. I added more settings to it than what it I had originally, and so it started creating G4 codes and stuff like that where it was throwing things off a little bit. And a lot of people have been ex complaining that they haven't been able to use Simplify 3D on these machines, especially the D200 and the E180, because of uh, a firmware issue. From what I understand, GTEC has just recently came out with a firmware that will correct those problems, and so that's the reason why we're doing the firmware update on this. In the past, I never really liked doing firmware updates, but since they came out with their EasyPrint 3D program, it makes it a whole lot easier, and I'll look, that's what we're going to go over today on how to do that using the EasyPrint 3D. Now, what you're going to need is the cable that came with your printer. This is a USB to Type B connector. Um, if you don't have one, it's pretty much the same one. It's going to go to uh, any of your regular printers. It's the same connector for it. But if you can pick up one of those cables, and then once you have that, you'll need to download EasyPrint 3D on either a Mac or a PC. And then from there, uh, it's a matter of ho hooking the cable to your, your computer, plugging it into the 3D printer, and going through the software. So let's go ahead and go over those steps right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to find a open port for the USB cable and we're going to plug that into the back of the computer there. Next thing would be to connect it to the back of the printer. Okay, so on the back of the printer we're going to find the port and plug the cable into that port right there. And as you might have just heard, the computer recognized it that it's been plugged in. But there's not a way of actually updating the firmware until we actually plug in the power cable to the printer, turn on the printer. So with everything plugged in and the printer turned on, what you're going to see is a splash screen come up depending on what printer you have. In this case we have the Giant Arm D200 and then it's going to show that everything is ready to go. Okay guys, so from here you see that I've opened up EasyPrint 3D. This is version 1.0.19 beta as of the time of filming. And so what we're going to, the first thing we want to do is we want to set for the correct printer. Now this is where a lot of people have messed up in the past and if you load the wrong firmware on your printer you're going to have some major issues. So first thing let's go ahead and go to the printer. Let's see here we are going to select the D200 and as you can see it changed the size of the of that part. We're going to go up to COM port and choose COM port 4. Okay so once we've chosen COM port 4 let's go ahead over here to the right hand side and click on connect. Now I don't know if you can hear it but the printer just restarted. Okay pr the printer just made the tones saying that it's been restarted. Okay so we know it's connected whenever you look down here at the bottom and it says extruder 10.6 uh, C and then over here on the bed it's a uh, 9.8 it toggles back and forth. That's meaning that's connected. Uh, no matter what, when you turn off your your printer is cold, it's going to be whatever the ambient temperature of the room is. So that's that's pretty much what that is. So we know it's connected at this point. So what now? We're going to go up here to the help. We're going to click on firmware update, and then we're going to make sure it says printer port D200 COM4, so we know it's the correct firmware. Now I've already installed the firmware last week, but we're going to go ahead and do that again purely for the sake of this video. Go ahead and hit OK. Now the printer just restarted and it's kind of went into a sleep mode from what I understand. And as you can see by the progress bar, it is starting to do the download. I just came around here to the front to take a look at the screen. Nothing on the screen seems to change. So from the front of the printer you can't really tell what's happening, but on the computer you can definitely see what happened. Okay, so it says we have an update success. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to hit Close. 
Okay, so now that we've reloaded the firmware, let's go ahead and reconnect our printer. We're just going to click up here. And I can hear the fans and everything changing on the printer. It's going through this little restart process. Okay, I just received the tone saying it's, it's ready to go. So let's just go ahead and put something in here and just try printing on this. Now, I'm a Cura guy. I've never used the software for printing. So let's go ahead and just load something in just for giggles and, and try it out. I'll load up a 3D Benchy here. Now, this is the reason why I have a problem with this program. It takes a long time to, to do anything with. I'm used to Cura where it just loads up. And so we just have to kind of wait here for a moment. And about the time we think that it's not going to, it loads. <laughs> That's the reason why I've never really messed with it. Now, using the left uh, click, I'm just going to take and move everything around here. I'm going to scale it down because I don't want to print real big. I don't want to be here all day with it. So we're just going to go with a 0.5 on the scale. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to just kind of go into our settings here. I want it on a low. We're doing a 10% infill. Uh, set the temperature for 210 because the filament that's in here right now is the Z marble from zero. And let's see, does it give us any other settings? I don't see any other settings here. Oh, here we go. Let's go custom. Okay, so layer height, nozzle diameter is correct. So layers, perimeters. Uh, let's take a look at retraction. Okay, so Z left I have it set at 0.25. That's a good good deal. That way it doesn't bump into anything whenever it's moving. I think that's going to be fine. And a four on the retraction. That sh that should be fine. So we're going to hit apply OK. I'm going to go ahead and slice the job. So we're going to click on the slicer. I like how it has a knife there for a slicer. <laughs> and this is another reason why I use Cura's because even though Cura sometimes seems like it takes forever for slicing, this one I've yet to slice a model with it. Okay, so it looks like we have a slice model. Now for giggles, I've never tried this either. Let's go ahead and go to uh, run job. Let's go ahead and just run it from the computer and just see how it works. I just walked back over here to the computer and was noticing that it's actually showing layer for layer where it's uh, how it's printing. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. That is pretty sweet.
Okay, so for a 13 minute print on a slicer I've never used on settings that are unproven. <laughs> Let's take a look at this and see just how bad it turned out. <laughs> oh man, this thing is tiny though. It's my thumb. I mean, look at that. <laughs> 0.4 millimeter no nozzle, but uh, the holes in the front for the that port, the portholes turned out good. They still have stringing issues. Cooling could be better underneath the window. The smokestack is just a complete horrible mess. Body of it's not bad. Uh, it looks like it might be some under extrusion, but it was printed at uh, a 0.3 layer height. <laughs> So there we have it. <laughs> we did the firmware update. We did a quick print on EasyPrint 3D, uh, but just very basic settings. I uh, have to go back through and kind of play with that a little bit more. I've never messed with it before, so it'll be kind of, kind of interesting to try it out a few more times. Um, one thing I do like about Cure is it, does, it did give me a setting for uh, cool down time, and that's where it really helps out when it comes to that smokestack. But anyway, main reason why I wanted to do the print using that software is just mainly to do a quick print and make sure that the firmware was correct and everything was working right. And it looks like it's, it was good to go. So anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Take care. And I'll catch you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. I sure appreciate it. You can do that by clicking on the link over here. Don't forget to ring the bell too. That way you'll be notified when a video comes out. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, please click on my Patreon page over here. You can support the channel from there. If you'd like to check out one of my other videos, please give these a shot. I think you're going to love them. Oh yeah, you're going to like them. Have a great day and take care. Bye.